Hello, I am Mantastic and Fantastic, and today I'm going to be discussing the various teams I have used to clear Arena 3. Now, Arena 3 has actually undergone some changes as per the last maintenance, in that it is now half stamina compared to what it used to be before, along with awarding double the amount of rank experience. So as you can see from like this feature image here, it's awarding um, like 360,000, and I've got up to 440,000 in some other runs since the maintenance. So it it's actually the most stamina efficient dungeon to run in the game. I find myself with too much stamina nowadays. I don't know what to do with it now because I clear Arena 3 and I almost rank up repeatedly, so it's kind of strange. But the point being is I want to share with you all the different teams I have used to successfully clear it because now that it is half stamina, more people can try it and not feel as bad if the dungeon just doesn't go according to plan. So this article here will be just summarizing the teams I use. I'm planning to actually revamp and update my Arena 3 guide in the very near future, which will discuss like the mechanics of Arena 3, not the teams, because I want to keep those two thoughts separate. Otherwise, it just become too long to read, and it's just easier to have them broken up. So um, as a final note, like the teams I use to clear this dungeon are restricted to my box. I am missing a lot of the top tier leaders, like there's no Kaede, there's no Dark Kallis, there's no Ranaves. Um, so a lot of the teams that um, are capable of clearing Arena 3, I will probably never be able to play, unfortunately. So it's not to say that they're incapable of doing it, it's just that I will not have access to it, so I won't be able to post a team that can clear it. You can probably find it elsewhere floating around the internet. There's lots of great resources out there on Reddit, even the Facebook groups, and the Puzzle and Dragon forums. And last but not least, I highly recommend you do watch my Twitch streams, as I actually do stream Arena 3 for the most part every time. Um, I stream because it's kind of the most exciting dungeon to play through. So, general team building guidelines. So, Arena 3 is essentially a 24 floor dungeon with randomized encounters. Now, it's not tr it's random in the sense that the spawns are picked from a pool of bosses. So, say for instance on floor 21, you can either fight Athena, Beelzebub, or Divine Queen Hera. You don't know which one you were going to get, but you're going to get one of them. So it makes it a little harder to always plan out um, the perfect team to counter it because you are going to be weaker to certain bosses, and you have to kind of sometimes sacrifice, like thinking, oh great, well, I just lost my shield, I can't stall effectively, I'm just going to die if I get Divine Queen Hera. Or conversely, I've just used all my board changers, if I get Beelzebub, I'm dead. You sometimes will have to go through it like that and just pray you don't get the incorrect spawn. And that's why a lot of people fail Arena, is because the spawns are random and you're just not prepared for it. So, generally speaking, a delay is very helpful of some sorts, and only for some teams. Not all teams need a delay. You also need pretty much ha ha you pretty much need to have a way to manage binds, whether it's a soft bind clear or a harder bind clear or bind between leaders, so on and so forth. You also need a way to overcome the pre-draws, and the pre-draws are monsters of 10 million defense, so you either need poison for damage or just large enough burst to go through them. You also need to at least be able to clear one of the radar dragons. Generally speaking, most teams can clear Zeus Dragon because he's universally the easiest one. He's quite easy to two-shot as well because you kind of chunk him down on the first turn, leaving above 50%, then burst him down underneath because it's hard to hit over 20 million when you don't have to go for like that gigantic hit. And finally, you want to have some capacity to overcome Dart or like sorry, one of the Kali's above 65% in rage hit. So either that's a big shield, or you have enough burst or actives left over from the radar dragon to use on her. So I have found with my experience that a poison, a delay, or optimal burst board damage is superior to true damage. This is because a delay is helpful in all scenarios. Like you can use the delay in the pre-draws, you can use it later on, it's always gonna help you. You can't use them on the radar dragons, but you can use them on floor 19, or sorry, floor 21, so that is helpful. In addition, uh, poison does have value because if um, you poison the pre-draws, you're able to actually set up your board, and that way a setup board will allow you to actually get one extra turn on stalling, and set up, like I said, you set up the board for the next floor, so it's a little easier, you might save actives further down the road. In addition, the poison also ensures that Parvardi's uh, jammers do not actually spawn, so what you can do is basically just stall out Parvardi, pop the poison, and then just stall again for the other active, kill her, 
If she dies from the poison, no jammers are made. You may save an active on Grizzar. That sort of idea. Like, it's small things like that that increases your chances of winning. And I want to try and improve my chances of winning as much as possible. And lastly, obviously, a big burst board uses usually two actives. And if you use two actives, uh, you don't have um, any other, you don't have to worry about, like, say, clogging up an inherit slot with something else. So optimal burst board for 10 million is usually doable, provided you don't get color resisted twice. So, all, like I said at the beginning, all the following teams that I'm going to showcase here have cleared Arena 3, and they all have varying degrees of success and consistency. So, like, if you're going for the one-off Hail Mary, it's very doable to do with a large variety of teams. However, with that being said, um, Hail Mary teams like that, they may only work against one Radar Dragon, and they need favorable spawns leading to the Radar Dragon. So it's very challenging to actually get that successful run. You run it ten times, you may have only one clear. But to be fair, it's still a clear, so you just have to keep that in mind. Like, you want to try and find ways to improve that consistency. So, um, finally, I want to say that like, um, during, like when I showcase my teams, I'll designate one as Team A, and Team A, if you're planning to be able to kill all the Radar Dragons, Team A is the one that absorbs the 15 turn skill delay. And that's obviously a dangerous mechanic, but if you plan it in such a way that Team B, who has all the burst, all the orb changers um, on their side, they don't get delayed, they're able to use their orb changers, kill um, Hephaestus Dragon appropriately, and then kill the Kali afterwards. Furthermore, Team A could also have very long inherits on a couple of monsters, and that may allow you to actually have one or two additional actives. So you have four from the B side, and then as many as possible from A. But it's just a matter of like planning out who takes the delay, or who basically absorbs that delay so the other side is safe. So, uh, Miro is my first team, this is the first team I ever used to clear Arena 3. It was done with a very um, less than ideal team compared to what it is now. Um, I've streamlined her team quite well to the point where I'd say I probably have like a 95% clear rate, maybe like, to be fair, I only lose nowadays with Miro if I make a bad human error or something outrageously bad goes wrong, which is most notably either like skyfalling a heart cross on say Hino or Sopdet, or just getting amazing amounts of light skyfalls on Hera Dragon. Aside from those scenarios, or maybe just rushing Noah Dragon when I don't need to, I don't really die with Miro because she's so safe. Furthermore, my team has lots of skill delay latents invested on them because I plan to use this team going into other endgame content and it's worth the investment. And last but not least, Mirror does have relatively fast clear times. And that's because she's not crazy orb hungry. Yes, you do need five orbs, but if you can maximize your combos every turn, as well as making a row, you kill pretty much everything. Certain floors can even get away with a TPA-like match. So you just have to judge it based on your team composition, how many rows, how many TPAs, and just what floor you're facing. Might sneeze. Sneezing. <coughs> ah, so... For Mantastic, who is the A-side, the one who's absorbing the delay, I actually run Miru with Saria, who has 5 SDRs, and DQ of DQ with 5 SDRs. It may seem like overkill, but I have more wiggle room for the delay. DQ is basically ready if I did not have to use her beforehand and she was able to charge up. The, dark, the light, light DQ is there for the recover bind, so both my sides have this recover bind, like the soft bind clearing. They also have Loki inherited. It's kind of, I'm not sure if I like the Loki inherit. I have had it from a long time ago, and I'm thinking I don't really need it, but it can be useful, and it does act as a bit of skill delay protection, and I always dump her active first if given the choice. Next is a reincarnated Venus with Saria inherited. I have lots of Sarias, I'm just throwing it out there. And basically it allows you to combo with Wedding Akachi, which what Fantastic has as well as providing a nice board change. There's three SDRs and recovery latents. And then Paymon is basically a stronger base than the Saria, like has better stats. Um, the enhanced orbs are helpful except on Parvati, and he has five skill delay resist latents. So he and my Awoken DQ both have their active skills if I get 15 turn delayed. My Miru's tend to have their active skills up quite quickly after the delay, so it does give me at least six actives plus some heart making here and there. On Fantastic side, who is the side that does not take the skill delay, uh, I run Wedding Akachi on the Miru to combo with all the Saryas I have on the other side, who has five SDRs as well. I run Wukong with a Red Odin, as per the poison is a long cooldown, so I don't have to worry about it capping out and losing Wukong's active. It allows me to set up the board against pre-draws, it allows me to kill Parvati if I encounter her, and like, it's just 
I feel like it's the most reliable way to deal with the pre-draws because yes, sorry, a wedding actually has big burst damage, but it's not always going to hit above 10 million just because the variance is higher and you never can make three rows and you do have a bit of a lower combo count in some cases. I have a DQXQ again with no, unfortunately no inherit so I don't have any duplicates and five SDRs as well. My Saria has Saria, three SDRs, two health, basically skill delay protection, and then the Venus with the Wedding Akachi, three SDRs, two recovery. Venus has a better body than Wedding Akachi, like she's a thousand weighted stats, so nothing compares by, like, relatively speaking. So, like, the team generally relies on the Miru Wedding Akachi combo, sorry, the Saria Wedding Akachi combo for giant burst damage. I can hit usually around 10 million, not always 10 million, sometimes a bit less, so that's why I don't use it against pre-draws, but... It's basically a very effective kill combo board because I can one-shot Dark Kali no problem through the shield. I can two-shot Zeus Dragon, I just whittle him down, and then Saria, act, um, Saria Wedding actually instantly kill him. That sort of idea. So that's kind of the burst I use for the team. I don't need the Loki Inherit because it's not usually necessary in most scenarios. So I do discuss this team in a little bit more detail if you want to read more, you can click it here. And as always, this article will be linked in the YouTube description below. Next is Krishna, and Krishna is the team that I have used the second most to clear Arena 3. And he does have maybe a 70 to 75% win rate, mostly because he is not a heart cross leader, so more vulnerable to gravity-based attacks. He's vulnerable to binds, so it just makes certain floors a little more dangerous. Just combinations can kill you faster. Um, I also have difficulty killing Hair Dragon because I would have to inherit a shield and then I have to lose my orb changers, which is bad because Hair Dragon is the only spawn I actually need a shield for. And if I lose actives, it can be problematic because Krishna is quite orb hungry. Furthermore, it's somewhat challenging to hit around 2 million damage of Krishna because of all the enhanced orbs, your damage is all over the place. Like, you use an orb changer, you get more fire orbs, and then you match, and it's like, hmm, my damage is like very different than it was with all enhanced orbs. So it's kind of a problematic scenario. So I just resign Hera Dragon to a loss with Krishna for that reason. So that's why it's 70 to 75, because there's 1 in 5 chance of Hera Dragon spawning. Which means if you try it for the first time, she will always spawn. But just keep trying. And like I said before, Krishna is orb hungry. You need to have 9 fire orbs to deal damage. So this obviously puts a constraint on active usage. You have to use actives in order to get those 9 fire orbs. And it also means you're also going to go through the dungeon much slower because you have to either stall for nine fire orbs, which is hard to assemble on the board without matching anything else, as well as using actives and then restalling. So it's just a slower team. It's relatively safe, but it's just slow. So I'm just putting it out there. And my Krishna team, like it does have at least all 297s, but I don't have many inherits. I don't really have any latents. So I could greatly improve the team and improve my clear rates if I just had extra latents and more flame tans lying around actually. So my Krishna on Mantastic was the B side, so B is the side that does not get delayed. Um, he has Awoken Sao Sao, basically it's a delay or an orb change if I need it. I have Erd, and Erd has five auto heals because I have auto heal awakenings, I might as well put on something that's kind of high recovery. Next is Sonata, well two Sonatas actually, and Sonatas have Great burst combo synergy of Erd, and that's why I like to keep this the B-side. And then I also have a Yamato, and he basically just an additional orb changer. So it's not a terrible card to have, but Yamato is just there. Plus he has um, soft bind clearing potential. I think I forgot to mention that. Fantastic, who is the A-side, so the one that does get delayed by the Hephaestus spawn, has Awoken Aries on Krishna. It's basically a, a straight up active upgrade. You get the Skyfall benefit as well as an orb change. So it's just a better active all around. I have Fire Light Aries, and I don't know why this auto heal is all I had. That's a typo, it should not be there. And he's the, he, I use the Fire Light Aries because I don't want any more enhanced orbs because it makes um, stalling on Vishnu difficult and rows are where I want my damage anyways. Because enhanced orbs have less benefit later on because you, unless you're using someone like Sonata to enhance the orbs, after you orb change, you don't have the orbs enhanced. So enhanced orbs are only good for those that fall down. So that's why I'm using Fire and Light Ares. He was also fully maxed out from beforehand, and Awoken Ares has two two prongs, and dual two prongs means he might hit significantly harder and heal absorption bosses, so I don't like that. I have Yamato on Yamato because it's I just 
tends to roll a lot of him, and it's just a skill delay protection, and it combos with Leyland, and my Leyland has Verdandi inherited. And now Verdandi makes walk, no sorry, makes wood, fire, and heal orbs, and that still has synergy with Yamato. It also has synergy with Ares. So I'm trading out that haste for hard orb generation, which is invaluable, and more board change synergy as well as providing skill delay protection as well. So in theory, I could basically have um, Leyland almost ready and Yamato almost ready if I get the 15 turn delay. So compared to Miru, like, it is a team that's quite short on board changers. I actually don't have many board changers. I may want to maybe find more fire tricolor board changers, but I need to find ways to have combo synergy still. And that's part of the reason why Krishna has a little more difficulty because say I encounter Beelzebub, I have to use a board changer. And then I only have one optimal board burst damage remaining. I won't have two. So I either have to change my leader inherits or um, add in more board changes here and there. So it can be a little risky for that reason. I go into a little more detail about Krishna in this uh, article here if you want to read more about it. Reincarnate Lakshmi and Reincarnate Lakshmi is a relatively new leader I've been using in Arena 3. It's unfortunately not very consistent, but it is fun and very fast paced actually. Um, she's not consistent because I don't I don't think I can really kill Gaia Dragon feasibly. I don't have a Gemstone Princess, so I don't have enough burst to inherit. And Lakshmi suffers from lower combo count. And it is possible, but rare to get three rows from an optimal board because you need to have either 11 or 12 hard orbs. So it's just really hard to hit enough damage on Gaia Dragon because water versus wood and 75% damage reduction shield means you just tickle them. It's just really difficult. Um, you also have to bring a shield, a big shield for Hera Dragon, and you may not even kill her in time because your your team has no health multiplier or heart cross to rely on. And Noah Dragon can be problematic because if you don't have a shield, you can't survive the second judgment hit, so it's very hard to whittle Noah Dragon down below 70%. So just lots of things can go wrong when using Lakshmi. So like it's fun. It mows through all the bosses leading up to the Radar Dragons, so that is good, but it just struggles on the Radar Dragons just because of the nature of the team. However, against Zeus Dragon, it's actually very good because Zeus Dragon is easy. You do first turn uh, matching it to maybe like 60-ish percent, and then Optimal Ward Burst kills them on the second turn. And for my Lakshmi team, I rely on using my optimal board to kill the pre-draws, and this only backfires if I get two wood pre-draws, which has happened a few times, surprisingly, which should only happen 4% of the time, but it can happen, so that's why I do have a delay, which you'll see here. So, on my team, Mantastic is actually the B-side, the one who doesn't get delayed, I don't know why it's not showing up, but Mantastic has Hatsume inherited on Lakshmi. I want to move Hatsume onto Sumire and maybe a board change on um, Lakshmi, just because I'd like to make hearts and water orbs just because of the way you need both those elements to deal damage. I have one Dark Resist latent on this whole team. It was useful. It's It would have saved me at one point when I got beautiful Skyfalls on Zerog and, like, on the Zerog, Zerog spawn because I Skyfelled like eight hard orbs connected, like a bunch of water and light, so it healed him and he just executed me. I have Reuni on Reuni because I always pull water six star Godfest exclusives. There's attack latents for more damage. Basically, skill delay protection. I have Blue Odin with Awoken Eye and Eye inherited. Blue Odin has better awakenings overall. He has an extra two prong, an extra row. So, I, it's just better awakenings overall than Eye and Eye, in all honesty. And it's basically used for burst damage, which does help against the Kali after the Radar Dragon. Andromeda is basically one of the best subs available. And she has actually all recovery latents because this was from my Blue Sonya and Sue. Well, I still use Sarah's body, to be fair. And then I have Sumire on Sumire for skill delay protection, because why not? Fantastic has Lakshmi of Ryune. Again, it's a better active. It combos with the Hatsumi as well. I have Skull of Ryune inherited. It should be really the um, Ryune's base, because it has more rows, more two prongs, but Skull is already 297. I don't really want to dump another um, 297 onto Ryune and next skill one as well, again. Or maybe I did, I don't recall. I have Orochi with Indra inherited, and that seems weird, but I need that delay sometimes at the beginning if things go horribly wrong, and then I need Indra's shield to deal with most of the radar dragons. So it's just kind of like a dead sub active, it's like basically a dead sub except for just the uh, radar dragon. I have Beach Erd, and they combo with Andromeda, so Fantastic has 
Andromeda Erd, and then I have uh, Hatsune with Reunite for combo for, for both teams. So I was actually able to record one of my Arena 3 clears with Lakshmi. Um, it's worth watching if you want to see the playstyle. It's I've gotten quicker at it just because this was like one of my this is the first day Lakshmi came out I think and I just played her right away. But um, I can get to the Radar Dragon faster. It's just I struggle with the Radar Dragon still. And last but not least, I actually have an Awoken Yumasachi Yamasachi team. So I have one clear with them, and I'm not, I'm just gonna put it out there. It's not reliable. It's not consistent, but it's very fun to play. 400 times looks glorious because everything dies with that. So. The main problem of Awoken U and Y is they have no defensive multiplier whatsoever. Krishna was tanky with health and recovery. Lakshmi had boatloads of recovery. U and Y has none of that. He is vulnerable to basically every mechanic. He's not bind immune. He's orb hungry. He needs board changers. He needs shields. He needs bind clears. He needs everything. So he's very risky to play. You have to basically just go through one shotting every single floor and pray you comboed enough to have enough orbs fall down for the next floor. Now, with all that being said, um, U and Y is at least reasonable at taking on some radar dragons. He can kill Gaia Dragon with ease because there is 400 times damage. You can obviously kill Zeus Dragon, provided you don't exceed 20 million, which you could do if you two prong too much, but at least it's able to kill Zeus Dragon. And Hera is just a loss. Hephaestus, maybe. I've never, I've, like I said, I've barely used U and Y, so I don't know if it could, but in theory, I have enough damage to kill both the Kali and Hephaestus without too many actives, hopefully. But um, for playing when playing U and Y through Arena Three, you can get away, relatively speaking, with 144 times for the majority of the floors. You throw in a two, water two prong into that, and things pretty much just fall over. It is somewhat orb hungry. You need two water, one wood, one dark, one light combo. So it does require some good luck, and you have to either pick your times to stall. Because stalling is tough because there's no recovery multiplier or no health multiplier. So you have to either set up, like, take the turn to stall and make sure you can heal more than you're actually being hit for. Because that gen, like, it can be hard if you get hit for, let's say, 15,000. Because basically all of you Misachi and Yamasachi actives I have access to, because I don't have Dark Callies or any of those style board changers, require you to break hearts to deal damage. And because of that, you cannot heal to deal damage. So you basically have to pray sometimes that you don't actually encounter lots of preemptive bosses, especially later on when you may have to use actives more liberally. So that is part of the risk with Yumasachi Yamasachi teams. So I have changed my team in preparation of playing Arena 3 a bit more of them. I think it's a fun team to play. It's obviously a great challenge. But um, the team I'm going to show, I'll show both the old team that was used, that actually had the clear, and the new team that I'm going to be using tentatively moving forward. So um, there's no real A or B side. I think I'm kind of screwed up by getting Festus, but I guess if there was, it should be Fantastic as B. I don't know why it's not showing up here. But I have basically U and Y, who makes water and dark orbs. You have to keep in mind the active is different. I have the water Kali with Sherry's Roots. Kali has a much better body. And Sherry's Roots basically improves her active. I want the time extends, I want the TPA. The killers are useless on U and Y teams. I have um, the Water Wood U and Y because it's basically a great sub on his own team. He makes water and wood orbs. So basically, I can make dark, I can make water, I can make wood. I just can't make light. So I, to get light orbs, I have to use the Kali's Board Refresh or Famiel. And Famiel is kind of a luck based board, cha board changer because they make um, a random amount of. Five, oh, sorry, Matt, random amount of water, wood, light, and dark. So you have to pray you get enough water orbs. I've gotten to the end bosses and just Famuel produced three or four water orbs, and I just cried in a little corner and died. But that's the risk of Famuel. Thankfully, at least the true damage can kill the pre draws if things won't go badly. But that's why a Kali or, or a Sherius or a light Sherius active has value because you can use their active, then you Masachi Yamasachi afterwards to make basically a very water-heavy board, 400 times, everything dies. And then finally I have Isis with Susano. It's the best shield I own. It's a bind clear if I don't have a shield. Um, so it's just risky overall. It's the only bind clear I have, but thankfully she charges up quickly. On my Yumasachi Yamasachi, I have basically another Awoken U and Y, just for skill delay protection. I have uh, another Water Wood Yumasachi Yamasachi, just basically the best sub out there. I have another Famuel. I have like the same team, basically. I have the coloring book Kali again with Sherry's same idea. Like I said, same team. Except I bring in Orochi with that Indra inherit, which I'm using for Lakshmi. So it does at least provide a delay at the beginning or a shield to at least tank the radar dragons later on. 
the old team had Light Cali with the Sherry's, and it had Isis with Susanna, and it also had Isis with Indra, but I've changed it up a little bit because I've basically added the coloring book Cali instead. So I like this playstyle. I think it's fun playing like uh, a rainbow esque um, water mono color team. Like it's a very fun playstyle, and I would love to play Raw Dragon one day in the future, but neither account owns a Dark Cali, and I don't really see that changing just based on my rolling luck. But if I could, I would definitely because it's a fun. It's fun to play a rainbow team. Like it is fun. It's different. It's exciting. And if you want to watch the video, it's of my Yumisashi Yamasashi clear. You can find it here. I got a bit of, I got a little lucky. I did this on my stream. I think it was my second try, actually. So, like, I was kind of like, I don't know what to do on some of the floors, but I got pretty lucky, I think, on some of the water sky falls for just 25 damage. So, in conclusion, I hope this post at least gives you some inspiration as to the various teams you could bring into Arena 3. With that being said, you obviously can bring, like, all other top two leaders like Raw Dragon, Kaede, Ranave. Beach Miru, even Sherry's Roots. There's lots of leaders that are capable of clearing Arena 3 of good consistency. I just don't happen to own any of them, so I can't showcase those. But if you do own those, you can clear them. And you should look forward to my Arena 3 guide, which I'll be releasing, which will be giving you like strategies against all the radar dragons, as well as um, recommendations on team building, like generally speaking, and how to counteract and advance through the various floors leading up to the radar dragons. So thank you very much, much for watching. Let me know what you think about this video and what you plan to use to clear Arena 3. Hope you have a fantastic evening and happy puzzling!